Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we make informed decisions about our financial future. This is our Forex Technical Analysis video update. Before we begin our video, we always like to start off our disclosures. Any symbols that you see today should not be inferred as a trader recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, option, they all have a level of risk associated with them. You can lose all of your money. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. As we said, this is our Forex Technical Analysis video update. In each of our videos, we will review the prior system's price action to come up with key support and resistance price levels. We'll look at the crude and gold charts to come up with leading sentiment. We'll come up with a low volatility watch list, an inside bar watch list, and we'll have an economic uh, calendar update to see what could affect our future and open trades. And finally, if there's time, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. Let's pull up the charts. Okay, so we're going to start off with the gold chart. And the, the main thing, obviously, we see this beautiful 12-day up move. That's certainly great. Uh, and what we're starting to see Again, certainly after a big move like this, the market needs to, to breathe, kind of conceptualize what happened and determine whether or not we're going to continue. But we can see that the, the, the wicks from before is acting as support. So you can see we came down and tested it, tested it. So uh, we're, we're, we're keeping this price level as our volume support. And we can kind of see that if we come over to our market profile, which we'll look at in a second. So now we're in this tight little range for the week here. Uh, we have our moving average coming up. You know, we, it's nice to get rid of the air. Um, for the most part, every time we've come to the 50 moving average, uh, you might take a little heat, but that's been a, a buying opportunity. So we're just going to continue to let this consolidate. Now, we all know what's going on in the States as far as the debt ceiling and you know, keep in mind that if you do raise that ceiling, that is uh, more liquidation on the dollar, and that is a flight to gold. So we may see gold actually continue its move higher, even if we do get a vote to raise the debt ceiling limit. As we do come over to our market profile, we can see right now that the majority of the volume is happening at basically 1601. Uh, but we can also see, though, uh, that support that we're talking about before around in the 1580s you can see that volume accumulating in this area so you can see that's why price on the daily is staying up because there's some volume support right under this overall again on our hourly we can see that we're in the overbought range on our RSI indicators starting to come out of that but even if we do come down into that 1580 range I will we'll probably likely see this turn over and we can see how long it took we see this great move on the daily and it finally, in our, our short term uh, buying moving average is finally taking control, but you see how long it took for that to happen. Also, notice that on our inside bar here on gold, it was on lighter volume. So there's definitely a lot of indecision, uh, and maybe the debt ceiling uh, decision will bring some clarity to both the dollar and to gold. So, with that being said, we come over to the pound dollar. And we can see on the daily that we've broken outside of this downtrend channel. Um, so we got to figure out what could happen next. And I think what we'll do is we'll scroll over just a little bit. And we can see this price level right in here. Let's draw something there. Right around 1.639-ish. Looks like there is some, some action in there. Um, Overall, though, as if I scroll back over, you can see that not too much is respected in, in this range. It does kind of freely go up and down, but that is something that I will watch. This 1.639, 1.63, 1.664, 1 I will watch that and see what's going to happen here. Uh, you can see the good news is that on our up move, especially this the one on Thursday, it did come with volume. We got an inside bar and then boom. And our, our uh, we got volume on the, the move up and volume died off on our consolidation. On our uh, you could almost say that this is an inside bar also. So um, it, it's gonna be interesting to see what's gonna happen. Now the story that we're going to tell 
on our hourly time frame is that we are well off of our long-term moving average, so we're well above that. We're also in a sell zone as far as our Bollinger Bands. So, yeah, and you can see that once we got outside of it, now we're starting to confirm conform and kind of come back to where we were. Now, that doesn't mean that these, the the um, the neutral area, the long-term moving average won't start to come up to where price is. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to immediately fall down, but we are above our long-term moving average. We are in a sell zone. Why did we get a, a, a sideways action on Friday? Well, we can see who's in control right now. Really, neither the dollar that at a pound and they're both below zero as we come down a little bit further and look at this better the red one here this is our dollar we got below um, our long-term moving average and we can see here that's where we got our divergence and as we come higher that's where we got our big move higher on Thursday but now uh, we can see that the uh, dollar made its way back up to the pound the pound made its way back down to the dollar and now they're just kind of snaking each other, and that's why we have uh, a move here. Who's in control? Who's in control? Uh, and indecision, and we know indecision has a lot to do with both some of the eurozone issues and the U.S. debt sell issues. And we can see basically on our probability indicator, it's in the middle. So overall, sell zone off of our long-term moving average, neither the dollar or the pound really being in control. How about the euro dollar? Here we can see that we did break, but here's the question. You know, originally we had this line here, but is it now time to readdress this and bring this over to here? And if we do that, you can see that we're at resistance. So, <coughs> excuse me, it's going to be interesting to see what happens here uh, certainly we can come into these wicks in here right in there and see some some uh, some you know reaction there but just like the pound there is a lot of uh, range a big range move here it's not tight um, so uh, that that uh, that is interesting we can see our selling volume is still in control just like the pound dollar very light volume on Friday so what's the story? Very similar, um, but it's getting back closer to parity. Uh, we are still in a sell zone, sideways action in a sell zone, still above our long-term moving average. Remember what the pound dollar, it was way down here, and here's our neutral, and so we're in a sell zone. Who's in control? Just like the pound dollar, really nobody is in control. Just like the pound dollar, there's our dollar divergence, there's our euro heading up. And then they begin to converge, come back to each other, and then they spend the end of uh, Friday basically snaking. No one's really in control. We can see that. We can see, though, uh, both the pound and the euro are heading up. And we did get a little, as we push down towards the long-term moving average in neutral, we did get uh, a, a probability indication that we would return higher. But it, right now, with no one being in control, uh, we can't necessarily say that we will on a daily run up and test 1.45. We need some clarity. We need one of our currencies to take control. So finally, we'll end off with the dollar franc coming over to the daily. We can see obviously a long-term downtrend, one of the nicest trends we have in the market. Um, and we can see an attempt to move back up to what was once support. <laughs> we stayed in this range for about... Um, a month or so, and now it looks like we're trying to come back up, test the 20 moving hours, test the bottom of this range, and that would be with the strength of the dollar. But right now, we don't have the strength of the dollar, and we see that the selling volume is still in control. So, what's our story? Well, our story is we are in the neutral zone. We're not in a buy zone, we're not in a sell zone, yet we are below our long term moving average. Uh, but we're in a neutral zone. Who's in control? Well, the franc was in control, but the dollar has made its way back out to parity. So now, at this instant, nobody's in control, but it looks like the dollar wants to. You can see that the dollar is heading up and the franc is heading down. So possibly the dollar taking control, which would allow for this to move up and test the bottom of this range that we're talking about. However, 
and decision of the dollar may lead to allowing the franc to once again take control. Okay, as we look at our watch list, we do have a couple of candidates for our low volatility candidate. We're going to look at the pound dollar, which is not fully there, but it's setting up, and the Aussie dollar is there. Again, this is our one hour time frame on uh, using Bollinger Bands and marking the high and low of the range. For our inside bar watch list, we currently do not have any candidates. As we finish off with our uh, study on what separates winning traders and losing traders, profitable traders, losing traders, higher probability traders, inconsistent traders, as we finish that segment, probably the key thing that separates winning traders and losing traders is the ability to distinguish between high risk and low risk trades. You know, in our cartoon here, it says we've considered every potential risk except the risk of avoiding all risks. And that simply means having a trading setup is not enough. You still have to understand, as we talked about in our last video, the playing field, the games of the day, the rules of the day. So there are times, even though your setting, trading setup is forming and confirms, that the rules of the day say don't take it. You know, you want to trade with the market. That's low risk versus against the market. Until you're, uh, you know, you have a, a profitable system that when you are trading against the trend that you know that you can modify the target, modify your risk so that you're again adjusting to the playing field. So being able to know when you're trading with the market, when you're trading with the professionals, when you're trading low risk trades versus trading against all of that is what separates winning traders and losing traders. As always you can find our videos on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter Move Up with Mike and then on Facebook we have a page Are You Financially Literate? You know, we've got our great free five video course on high probability trading. Uh, you can find that there. And again, it's our coaching that we believe. What separates winning traders and losing traders is the trader's mindset. And we can help you develop that. Cash back for Forex trades. If you're going to be trading Forex, you might as well be getting paid for it. It's not going to change your spread. It's not going to change the reaction. It's not going to change the platform. But you can receive rebates for your Forex trades. And finally, if you want to get automated singles to trade on automatically or you get the signals to trade yourself we have an automatic forex trading system for you as we said it's not about the system the indicator or the room that you're in it's about the ability to pull the trigger it's about having that traders mindset to have the belief in your system and follow it disciplined and focused thanks guys and I'll see you next time